Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rasan427. Actually, today, what you're doing is my Backlash 2024 preview and predictions. And this is actually my predictions on Backlash 2024, which is taking place May 4th. Uh, actually, next week and next Saturday. Well, this Saturday. You've seen this on Monday. This Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. I love these afternoon shows. You have to watch something all the way 11 o'clock, midnight, and stuff like that. But I'm actually excited about the pay-per-view. And I know there'll be more matches probably announced on Raw. But I usually do it on Monday anyway. We actually got five matches announced. Four from SmackDown. Only one match announced from Raw. That's reason I think they're going to announce more for Raw. One or two more matches. They usually don't go past six or seven matches now for these pay-per-views. But actually, jumping right into it. Actually getting into the World Heavyweight Championship match. The one match from uh, Monday Night Raw. You got Jey Uso versus Damian Priest. Now, with this match, I don't think Damian Priest is dropping it right now. It's just way too early for him to drop it. He only had a, he hasn't done anything with the title. He hasn't had a title defense yet. But I'm going to go with Damian Priest winning. Now, I just think it's to be the way that um, Damian Priest wins. Because they could just have a judgment date in the fair. But I do think Jacob Fatu is going to end the fair. That's my prediction at first. But then with them doing the tag team match and him still not debuting yet. Now, he could debut the SmackDown before this, but I don't think so. I think they should wait till Backlash. I think this would be the perfect spot. But then if he debuts in a tag team match, then I don't see him doing double things and interfering in two matches, which could be the case. But I got Damian Priest winning. I don't think he's winning clean. Is he going to just with that interfere or Jacob Fatu interfere? You know, I think Jacob Fatu is going to interfere inside of a whole another different match than actually this one. But, yeah, I'm actually excited about this one. I feel like Jey Uso is definitely a world champion in the making. He will be a world champion. I don't know about this year because there's a lot. I feel like they have a story to where they want to build up to with Punk and Drew and stuff. But I think definitely by next year, he should be a world have, a world heavyweight champion, daddy champion, probably a world heavyweight champion, to be honest. He'll probably still be on Raw. But I definitely think he's going to be a world champion by next year. Definitely think that he's super over it. He's great. He has a great character. And everything like that. And I definitely think he's going to play a big factor into this Bloodline storyline. Even though he's on Monday Night Raw. And I think all the rest of the Bloodline actually on SmackDown. They might put Jimmy on Raw. I know Roman had pulled out of the draft. But I got Damian Priest picking up the victory inside this match. I definitely, I definitely think he retains it. I don't think he has a long title reign. I think by SummerSlam he probably loses the title. But I definitely think Damian Priest is going to win this match. And actually next match I actually want to talk about and discuss is the triple dot match for the WWE Women's Championship. Now, it's the same thing. She just won that Mania. Doubt she loses this fast. Naomi gets the title shot. You got Naomi, the Women's Champion Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton. Now, I'm not a huge Tiffany Stratton fan. I really don't care for her at all, to be honest. But I definitely have Bailey picking up the figure side of this match. It's way too early for her to drop the championship. I definitely think this would be a great match. I do think... I mean, she's just so Tiffany Shine just okay to me. I think Naomi is great. Of course, Bailey, fantastic. She's fun for horsewoman, but I definitely have Bailey picking up this victory. I think this would be a really good match. It's definitely the triple threat match and what they can do with that. And I think it's great for Naomi. She gets a title shot. Tiffany Stratton moves up. She gets a title shot as well. And this to me just proves how better. The SmackDown Women's Division now with the draft, I thought they were going to switch some stuff up. I mean, they still could. I think Tiffany Stratton could definitely use a move over the Monday Night Raw because I think the SmackDown Women's Division is so much better than the Raw Women's Division. I mean, you got Becky Lynch, but then Ray Ripley is not there. Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan, outside of that, I really don't care for Nia Jax. Actually, Nia Jax moved to SmackDown, so that just bolsters the SmackDown Raw even more. But it got, I think one of, I think one of them might actually get moved to Monday Night Raw because Definitely, that SmackDown Women's roster is just so, so much better. But yeah, I got Bailey picking up the victory inside this match. I think it's going to be a really good match. Next up, now I was talking about Jacob Fat 2. You had Tama Tonka and Sol Sokoa versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Now, I'm not really familiar with Tama Tonka. I know he was in New Japan. He did the Bullet Cup stuff. I am familiar with Jacob Fat 2. Jacob Fat 2, I mean, he's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love everything that he actually does. He's like... I hate to say a better version of Soul Sokoa because I'm just not really big. I think Soul Sokoa, I think the story that they're going to tell with him upcoming, I think it's going to be great. But him in the ring and just, he just bores me a little bit, to be honest. It's just like there's really nothing to him. But with this match, now I was going to say Randy Orton and Kevin Owens win because they lost that Mania. I mean, you can lose back to back pay per view matches, but I was like, they both lost that Mania. So it'd be kind of weird. But then, if he debuts, you can't really have the bloodline lose. So, I'm going to go with Tama Tonga and Sosa Cole picked up the victory inside this match. I think Kevin Owens actually takes the pinfall victory. 
Because I don't think Randy Orton has took a pinfall victory since he's been back, from what I believe. He's been in multi-man matches. He has took losses, but he has not taken a pinfall victory. And I don't think he does either. I definitely think this is Tamatega's debut match. So, definitely going to win this match. But I definitely think Jacob Fatu debuts right here at this show. I think this would be a really good match as well. It would be great to see what Tango Tango actually does in the ring. I think he looks fantastic. Can't wait to see what they do with the storyline. But this is the perfect feud for them because it seems like Randy Orton and Kevin Owens are a tag team now. It just seems like at this point, because with Dana Mania and what they're doing now at this, what they're doing now with this one. But I definitely got Tama Tango Sosakoa picked up the victory. Adam Jacob Fatu to the new faction. I don't know if you call it New Bloodline or I don't know if they have two different names to it. Old Bloodline versus New Bloodline. What they're actually going to do with that. And next up, another tag team match. Now you have to got the Kabuki Warriors versus Bianca Belair and Jay Cargo. Now, I think I said this, one of my earlier, I forgot what video I said it in, but I said Bianca and Jay, they're going to be a tag team. I think they're going, they're winning this match. The Kubica Warriors have done nothing with the tag team championships. I feel like Bianca and Jay can do something with it. I think the story that they're going to tell is, which, I mean, it's, it's an obvious storyline, what they're going to tell, is that Bianca and Jay tag team champions, they're going to hold it for a while, probably all the way up until next year, and that's going to lead to them actually, well, I mean, they could blow blow off at the end of the year, but I think oh wait till next year, and then they're gonna actually have them blow up and then have them fight in that one on one match, which will probably lead to Mania, I'm guessing. But then it's like if you do Bianca and Jay, I think they gotta be for a title. I mean, it doesn't have to be for a title, but I would assume it's for a title. Maybe Water Tag Team Champions, one of them, Bianca actually wins the championship, and then that's the jealousy that Jay actually has. But I definitely see them. Winning this championship or at Backlash, holding it for a long time. Hopefully, they can do some of these titles. These titles have not meant anything, and it's for various reasons. To be honest, um, they I, I, nobody has been able to really elevate these championships. To be completely honest, nobody, just absolutely nobody. But hopefully, they can actually do it. You have two superstars holding the tag team championships. I definitely Kabuki Warriors have done nothing with the championships, so just had them drop the titles. Now, if Bianca and Jay hold the championships and had them had a run with it and then had that blow off because that's the match that everybody wants to see. Everybody's excited about seeing at this point and stuff like that. Everybody is super excited about that match. I definitely think they can hold this off, hold them, her championship all the way to Mania and stuff like that. But I got Bianca and Jay picking up the victory and they'll be your new Women's Tag Team Championship. Women Tag Team Champions. And the main event... Of this show, Backlash 2024, we got Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles, two of my all-time favorites. Now, AJ Styles is pretty much my probably my second favorite wrestler of all time, behind you know John Cena. John Cena is my absolute favorite, but yeah, this is definitely the test match. You know, AJ has done this with Roman after he won in 2016. He did it with Seth after he won in 2019. Now in 2024, AJ is going to do it again because he's fantastic. I mean, he's one of the greatest of all time inside the ring. To me, he's definitely top three, top five greatest of all time. Just overall in wrestling inside the ring. But, of course, Cody Rhodes is picking up the victory inside this match. Um, I think this would be a great match. I think that the French crowd will actually love this match. I think it's a great main event for Backlash. I know AJ beating AJ. I mean, AJ beating LA Knight. A lot of people didn't like that. And they was like, well, wow, why does AJ get the, get the championship shot if he lost that mania? Just like, they're not going to do baby versus baby face versus baby face. With LA Knight, like, like, like they're just not going to do that. And then you're going to have LA Knight take another L because he's going to take the L to Cody. And that's the weird thing about what well, that's a whole nother thing. LA Knight staying on SmackDown, it's just like Cody's here, he's the world champion. So is LA Knight not going after world championship? Like, what are you doing with him because you're keeping him on the same brand as Cody? He's your top guy in all of the company, he's the world champion, he's not losing anytime soon. So, what is LA Knight going to actually do? So, I mean, I, I guess I can see why people wanted LA Knight versus Cody, but even though that didn't really make any sense. Hill versus Babyface, the best way, the best approach that they could go about it, especially with this like this. I love what they did, so that's just to me personally. But, yeah, I got Cody Rhodes picking up the victory. Of course, he's winning. He's winning the championship. AJ is not winning the championship. Cody is not dropping the title already and stuff like that. But that was my predictions for this whole entire show. I know there'll be probably a few more matches, a couple more matches announced. What could they announce for the show? For Monday Night Raw, I mean, maybe Becky defends against Liv Morgan. But then it's like, that's really no build to it. I think they should probably just hold that off until maybe, what is it, King of the Queen of the Ring is next pay-per-view. Just hold that off until then or till whatever pay-per-view is next for you can really build to that. Um, 
maybe IC title match. Sami Zayn defends against Gable. They could add that match. Um, maybe a Raw Tag Team Championship matches. A few matches they could ask, announce for Monday Night Raw, but I didn't even realize that. They got four SmackDown matches and one Raw match. But yeah, tell me your thoughts on the conversation below. What do you think about the predictions? What match you think can add to this match? I think they'll add one or two more matches to this. Car, we already got five. They usually don't go past seven now. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.